So, hello everybody, it seems we are already in part 3 of this Developing with Clap series. What happened last time? I showed you how you can build a plugin on Linux, Windows as well as Mac OS and how you can run it with Bitwig. I had a very strange issue on Linux with Bitwig running the Clap file, but it seems the solution was pretty simple. And as I suspected, the actual error message was completely misleading and the error was due to an issue in an early beta version of Bitwig which created a broken index so the solution was simply to delete the cache and index folder in the Bitwig directory and then everything ran fine. So, so much for that. This time we want to build our own basic clap plugin as well as run it and look into how we can debug it which is also very helpful when you do development. So what is the plan here? It seems that the most work was already done by the clap people for us. There is a template for your own plugin available. There is one in pure C but there's also support for C++ but this time we will only look at the pure C template. What I did to keep this going, I created an empty Git repo and then also added the reference to the GLAB library and then simply modified a bit the CMakeList file, which we used last time in the GLAB sort demo, so removed the not required other libraries and that was basically it. But we're going to have a look at that in a second. You don't have to go the Git way, you also simply download the GLAB header files from the GLAB GitHub and then statically add them to your browser. Project, but I chose that way because it's easy to update clap if it gets necessary. Let's take a look at that into the GitHub of clap. In the include clap, you find all the required header files you need for building your clap file. But in a source folder, there are some additional helpful files. For example, our template is a plugin template.c, which we can use. And I made a copy of that file into my own repository. And the only thing I basically changed here is the description. Looking at my repositories, just simply call it clap tutorials. And in there, there is basically nothing besides this one file in a source folder. And I renamed the plugin dash template.c file to moss dash main.c, but you can name it anything you like. And that's also fine. The other thing I added is a CMake list here. Maybe let's have a look at that. So I use the one from Paul of the clap saw demo. And the only thing I basically changed is the name of the project. So I named the project moss clap. I changed the version number to very, very low 001. And the other thing is I removed all the other modules so there is only this one file here in the module and I also removed all other references to libraries in these two settings which we don't need and that's basically all there is so you can also use that as a template for your own project so the only thing you need to change is here then the, the references to your source files as well as change the name of the project. And then I issued simply this submodule add command, which adds the clap project as a reference submodule to the git project. So you see that as well. And I added here a path at the end. So it's lips clap so that it lands in this sub path. And if you don't do that, it would be here in a top directory. And I think it's a bit nicer to have this in a subdirectory lips. So there's only one thing we need to look at is this CMake folder. This contains this plist.in which is required for Macintosh and I also renamed that and there is also a template for you here in the clap repository which is called plugins.plist.in and I just renamed it so it has the same name as your project because that's how it referenced here in a CMake file so if you take a look at that again here is a plist in file and it uses here your project name so it should have the same name as your project. That's basically all about it. So license readme is absolutely optional. So git modules is here the additional library and in git ignore I only added to ignore the build file folder because you want to build in it. So that's 
the basic setup and you can totally copy that and simply use it as a basis for your plugin as well. Just change the name of the project and the metadata, which we will have a look in a second in the source file. But first, let's simply build this and try to get this going. So let's do it like we did last time, create an empty folder on the desktop. So let's call that clap pure C and into that folder, we want to clone the tutorial. So let's open the PowerShell and let's go here on the desktop and then execute here our checkout clone command. And this worked fine. Then we enter the folder and then we also retrieve the clap header project. And then we are already good to go here for creating the configure part of CMake. And as a second step, we finally execute the build. And both are done with debug settings because as I said in the introduction, we want to look in how to debug our clap file. We should have ended up now with our tutorials and here in our build, we should be able to find here in debug the clap file. So yeah, so here it is, the clap file. Let's copy that over to here, C one program files, and there is a common files, and there is, here is a clap folder. It's already here from my previous test, but let's override it with that one. Yeah, good to go. So we have our clap ready. Now let's run Bitwig. Here is Bitwig. Let's see if we can find the clap file. And here it is. So MossClap, that's a new one we created. And you don't see much about it. Basically, the creator is Moss, which I said. And let's just confirm that. So we have here the Clap plugin running, which does nothing besides just copying the input audio to the output audio. And we can check if that is working. Let's just add any kind of instrument in front of that, whatever, anything here. And add some notes to that. Let's run that. And you see that the audio is passed through our clap plugin. So it's just copying the audio, but nevertheless, this is working. We also see there are no parameter or nothing. So it's a very, very just basic clap plugin, but at least we got it running and this works nicely. Let's remove all that. Next thing you want to look into is how to debug that. And a nice thing that CMake does for us is that it also creates for your favorite IDE a workspace. So there is also a default for that. So for example, here on Windows, it creates automatically a file or several files to run it in Visual Studio. And if you run CMake with the option dash H, you will get all the different uh, options you have for running CMake. And one of the options is dash G generator name. So this allows you to build several working environments. As you see here, these are the generators available. You can create for different versions of Visual Studio for good old ball and NMake or whatever. There's also Eclipse support here. And so you can choose your favorite working C++ or C working environment. And the yeah, as you see, the one with the star is the default. So if you don't give this minus G option, you are good to go with Visual Studio 17 from 2022. As a tip, you can check out the same on your system. So on Mac OS and Linux and for on Mac, you, for example, you can add dash G with Xcode and then it will also create you an Xcode workspace. Building works absolutely the same this time on Mac OS and Linux, which I tested. So you simply issue the same commands I showed. And then you should add this dash G and with Xcode or with Eclipse or whatever you want to use. And this will then also create the workspace for you. But here on Windows, we have already our Visual Studio environment created. If we go to the build top folder, you will see many project files created. And there is also a solution file available. So solution is the workspace type for Visual Studio. So let's open that up. Here we are. 
And we have here four projects, but the interesting one is here the Mosk Lab. Under debugging, we can choose to connect to a process. And this is what we're going to do, because the little bit difficult thing with that is that we do not want to debug the main process of Bitwig, but Bitwig puts the plugins in separate processes. There is also this audio engine process. And what I noticed is debugging works here fine on Windows if we attach our debugger to this audio process. So let's try if that works. There you see Bitwig Studio here, and there is the engine as well as the plugin host. And as I said, I could make it work by connecting to Bitwig Audio Engine. It might be different on the other operating systems. I did not test that. So for the interested viewer, <laughs> please check that out on macOS and Linux. Since I'm not that savvy on these two OSs, I did not want to waste several days again into these issues. But let's continue here with Windows connecting to that one and we got the debugging running to debug something we need the file and we have only one source file which we will find here so let's just add breakpoints let's just add them everywhere what is that so and then let's again add the plugin here And as you see, we already stop in the debugger. I will explain the sequence of calls into the Clap API in the next part, I guess, of the series. But just for the sake of it now, let's step a little bit through it to get a first impression how this works and how this works here in C especially. So first thing here is called that we want to have some kind of factory, which is called. And there you can check here for the Clap version if you support that or not. So this seems to be fine. And the next step here is in the create one. And this is basically where you set up your plugin interface for your host. You have different methods which get called from the host. So you have an initializer method, a destroy method, activate, deactivating, starting the processing, stop processing, reset, more processing, get extension info, and a main thread. And you can name these methods as you like. You just need to fill that information here in a structure and then return this information to the host. So next, what will happen next? Let's continue. Yeah, as expected, next work thing is called is the init of the plugin. You can do here some initializing and this is a part where you can check which extensions are supported by the host also what are extensions i will talk about that also in a later tutorial but just as a first idea you can find out what features are supported by the host and this is happening here in this init next one is the opposite thing now the host can ask you what is supported by your plugin which of the clap extensions are supported and there are some must ones and some optional ones and you see here there's information how much latency your plugin adds how many audio ports your plugin supports and how many node ports your plugin supports and there's also other ones like parameter information state information and so on and this will be called quite sometimes with all these different options for example here you see it's querying for the state Next one is for render information, and this goes on for quite some while, so we will not look at all of them and simply continue. Next one is then getting information about the audio ports. We don't want to look at that. Next one is then about the latency information. And then we go into processing. And if you look at that, it's pretty easy to understand. It basically copies the input to the output. Our plugin is up and luckily running and we can try now something else to terminate it. So we don't have to delete it. You can also just disable it. So what is then happening? You see the plugin is destroyed because we fully disabled it. And that's basically it. And let's turn it on again. And we're back into the whole create process. So you see Everything is happening again, and this is a way, if you created a new version here in your build environment and want to reload the new version, you can simply deactivate the plugin, 
and activate it again. So this is with the Alt key and A what I'm pressing here. Or you could also say toggle activation. So this is alternate key and A to do this as well. So this is one way. Another way is simply to kill the whole, uh, whole audio engine. This can be done here, deactivate for this project. And then this will also be unloaded. And then you can activate it again in case if you have multiple instances of your plugin here in a project. I think we leave it to that for part three. This was quite some input. I think you know now how to create your basic clap plugin in pure C and you could already if you want fiddle around a little bit into that it's quite easy to understand but next time we will have a closer look at what these methods do also what the metadata says and dabble into that a little bit further and until next time write some funky code